Good morning. Thank you for coming. I would like to thank His Majesty King Abdullah for so graciously hosting this gathering of hope and action. I want to thank His Majesty for his continued efforts to bring peace and hope to the Middle East. I listened to His Majesty's address as well to the statement of President of Egypt, His Excellency Al-Sisi. I think they are talking about the future, they are talking about issues concerning each of us and all of us. It was really a message of hope. It's clear that all of us should support, on one hand, the renewal of the negotiations for peace, and on the other hand, to look for ways to bring an end to terror. Terror has spilled so much blood. Terror has created a tragic loss of so many in innocent people, many children, women, and made so many refugees in millions. For all of us, from all the religions, cutting head is not a religious call, it is a sin, not a prayer. We must all raise to voice the responsibility and the stand together against violence. The people of the Middle East know today that the real problem is the face of terror, is how to face terror and how to end terror. All who stand for peace and against terror have to stand united. The Middle East is going through a complicated situation, but not a lost one. I believe that from a crisis, one can emerge stronger and better. We must take advantage of the new opportunities that have arisen. This reality might serve all of our people with blessing of peace and prosperity. In Israel, there is a clear majority for the two-state solution. It is being supported by the majority of the people, and I'm convinced there will be no better, and there is no better alternative for the two-state solution. I believe it is possible. I believe it's needed. I believe it's urgent. There is an interruption in the peace negotiations right now, but I believe that the peace negotiations can be resumed, and sooner the better. It is sure that it's impossible to freeze realities. For me, it's the nine times that I participate in this gathering in Jordan. And when I look back, nothing was left from the situation that existed nine years ago. No status quo all the time. Things are changing, demanding, and offering new occasions and new problems. The status quo is not an option. Changes arises from every source and every development. To the pessimists who have already buried the two-state solution, I would like to remind that there was a time when peace and Jordan were considered a fantasy or a dream, an impossible impossibility. Today, it is a reality and a hope. It's already a long time since it was introduced. It went through many tests, and many challenges, and it remains a peace. We greatly value the peace agreements of our, with the two of our greatest neighbors, Egypt being the largest country in the Middle East and Jordan being the nearest country to us. They have followed us to live in peace, side by side, through challenges, realities of our region. 
Alongside the political path to our peace, we must continue to pave an economic path which is in the global economy. It's a new experience and it offers a new addition to strengthen and opening peace. If the countries in the Middle East will enter the global economy, they'll find new advantages to escape poverty, as we did. We were a typical Middle Eastern country with very little resources whatsoever. And it is really the global approach of innovation that helped us to overcome our troubles and our shortages. It can happen to any other country here. The scientific march is gaining strength and, peace all the, and speed all the time. We are living in two parallel economies. The global economy, which doesn't have frontiers and doesn't know differences among people. And the national economy, bound by old borders and prejudices and frontiers. The Middle East is now facing both economies, the old and the new. And we should not postponed to enter the new age as well. I do believe that while opening the peace negotiation, we must also reopen parallelly, not instead of, the potential of the global economy. As the negotiation encourages peaceful cooperation, the global economy encourages regional occasion. We are called a startup nation. One can say the Middle East can have a startup region. I believe that today the Middle East can offer cooperation for progress, for hope, against extremism and bloodshed. Together we can make our region more promising, more peaceful, more fruitful. The sooner, the better. Thank you. They don't hear you. Wake up. No, no, it's okay. Is there someone who wants to ask questions? Okay. Hi. One. Uh, Mr. Perez, uh, you say peace is urgent, peace is uh, possible, but when you see uh, the new government in Israel, that is widely considered as the most right wing government in Israel's history, do you believe that? On Israel's side, there is a real commitment to a two-state solution. Well, I don't uh, know how do you see the new government. They just started. They just have one cabinet meeting. And uh, I think one should watch what they are going to do. Because uh, the commitment to a two-state uh, solution was inherited by the, pres by the previous government and the new one say they are going to continue it. So it's a little bit too early to judge. I think also you know that you cannot judge governments or leaders separately from the overall situation. There is a situation that requires answers and I'm sure the government will have and probably will look for answers that are answering the challenges of the situation. Thank you. <clears throat> you. You say there's a clear majority in Israel for a two-state solution. Yes. It's probably true, but there is... Why probably? It's true. My assessment. Yes. I'm not sure there's a majority for a two-state solution on the terms that President Abbas repeated today. And this is not a new position. This is the reason why there's been no peace for 20 years. So, the movement is growing at this point to put international pressure on Israel. Obviously, Israel resists this, as any country would. However, increasingly, many people in Israel, on the left, from your own camp, are actually in favor of this. Can you tell us what your position is? 
look, we have to negotiate because we disagree. If you would, disagree, you would agree, you wouldn't have to negotiate. But in addition to the disagreements that still exist, that I don't deny them, there was a great deal of agreements. There was a change in the Arab attitude. If you'll compare the three calls of Khartoum, not to negotiate Israel, not to deal with Israel, not to recognize Israel, and you look at the new Arab program for peace, it's a major change. At least some points that were in contradiction or disagreement. The paper is coming closer to a solution. And in Israel too, it took time, but the majority is for a two-state solution. We have to negotiate the differences, and there is no other way to solve them by, but by negotiations. You know, I'm too old a little bit to think that if you have a disagreement, this is the end of the world. I'm young enough to believe that if you have a disagreement, you can solve it as well. That's my experience. I, I can hardly hear you. Please raise your voice a little bit. Okay. I'm from Kosovo and I would like to you to ask uh, why Israel do not recognize the independence of Kosovo? Because now, if you... Kosovo, why, why doesn't Kosovo, Israel... Kosovo. Why Israel doesn't recognize independence of Kosovo? Yes. But now we have an agreement with uh, Serbia and uh, Kosovo. I think we have relations with Kosovo. The matter of uh, recognition is always under study. Uh, I just want to ask, will any future uh, settlement with the Palestinians solve the problem with the Palestinian refugee outside? How they can uh, come back and what's the solution for them? For the refugees, you mean? Yeah. Well, in the Arab papers, it's being said that we have to find a just and right solution. It's accepted by us as well. We don't have, nobody has a solution to refugees all over the world. It's not simple. But clearly, we think it should be negotiated. And as the Arab paper, not only our paper, suggested the solution must be right and equal, right and agreed. I think that's the entrance to negotiations. I want also to remind that in the previous construction of the peace negotiations, there were two sorts of negotiations. It was a double-decked bus, one directly between the Palestinian and us, and then indirectly with all other issues which are not just between the Palestinian and us. This included a committee to solve the refugee problem headed by the Canadian delegation and with the participation of the Palestinians, the Arabs, and Israel. They started to work quite promising, and I think we have to renew the, the work of this established committee, which was never stopped officially. Thank you very much. Okay.